how's it going everyone uh, this video ended up being a way too long so I split this up into two parts uh, this is part two I didn't get to tell you that uh, the first part was going to be part one but this is part two uh, finishing up all the bodywork and paint on the 1973 Bally Monte Carlo so you can watch through the rest of this video and see how I got to this point. Okay, we got our body work done here on the back box. And I started mapping out and putting in our artwork. Uh, if you can see, I got my these triangles put in and our line with our orange or yellow. I keep wanting to call it orange because there's so much orange in that paint. And our black, get our black in. Now what I did was I took my artwork, taped it over Bristol board. And then cut it out with an exacto knife. Cut that out. That way I could set that right up on there where it belongs and trace out my my triangle. The these lines here, those were easy. All I had to do is ruler those to get them put in. The hardest part's going to be putting the artwork in on the bottom. We're going to do the same thing. We have our tracing of our artwork. And then all we have to do is start cutting it out on the Bristol board and trace it in and then paint, paint it in. Pretty good. I think I got the color matched up pretty nice. Um, I painted this once already and it looked like hell. It was just way too yellow. I mean, that paint ended up almost that color. And it just looked like hell. So I stripped it all down. And I had to wait for it to set up. Stripped it all down. And this is what I come up with on the front. You can see. Camera doesn't, it, it's hard to tell with the camera. But it is really close. Uh, I touched up a few spots, like that one real bad spot there, but you can see it's just a little bit darker. Now I have another one, another color that I was going to do on here, because this is a little bit lighter than that, or that. So what I'm going to do is I will get that paint out too, and I'll touch up some spots here that's not real noticeable and we'll see how it is see if it's close enough so that's where we're at right at the moment uh, let me get this artwork done in put in and then we can start painting on our cabinet here and get it done this is all ready to be painted now I just want to get this traced out so we can paint it so let me get that done and then we'll be, come back and hopefully we can start painting here shortly and get this all done. Alright, there it is. After about a, I don't know. About three days worth of work. I got that side all done. And you need to think of the front. Am I great or what? I know, you're saying to yourself, I don't know or what. And yeah, we got all the artwork in. Got it all painted up. I clear coated it to save the art that's on it now the same with the 
side box. The side's all done. I got that all all filled in and clear coated. Paint didn't match too awful bad. The black's okay. The red, uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, I don't know what you want to call it. You know, just some brush marks left in it. But I think it turned out good. Now <laughs> I thought I was going to be done once I finished this side up. Let me get this turned around so you can see it in the light. Don't mind everything. I'm just going to go for a ride with me. Now we have this side. I thought I only had a couple holes to patch up down here, but because you know I was sitting sitting on that side the whole time, so. Guess what? Wrong! I got uh, the whole bottoms coming off of it. Nice, huh? <laughs> so, what we're going to do here is I'll inject glue, of course, into our joint. We'll clamp that together. And I need to hold the, I got to glue the bottom back down. And you can see. Uh, if there, uh, oop, let me get you. There, okay, you can see these support blocks. I'll glue under them. Put glue under them because you can see it. And I'll put glue in that joint right up in there. Now glue that all up. Clamp her down. Uh, you can see I marked where the, the support blocks are. That way I can shoot some brads into it anyway to kind of help hold it down while it's gluing. There was uh, some finishing nails stuffed in there and they weren't doing a doing diddly squat. So I didn't realize it or I would have done this earlier. But you know, hey life of repairing old pinball machines and the face I'll just go ahead and I'll paint that whole face you can see I kinda got a oops anyway but we'll get that all painted up too and hopefully I can get painting on this tomorrow if I'm lucky Maybe even later today, after while it's clamped, I can go ahead and start touching up some spots and f plugging our holes. Those three holes, get those all filled in. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole lot to this side or not. We'll see what happens once I get into it. Uh, if it starts falling apart like the other side did, then I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll do what I got to do what I got to do. So first of all, let's get this uh, glued and clamped back together and get her so she'll stand on her own two feet. In this case, four feet. And not have a droopy head. Alright, that's, that's all I'm going to do as far as repairing this side. I got that big chunk removed out of it. Uh, I got the clamps off of it and everything all nice and tight again uh, I just got a little I had to repair a big chunk that was missing here uh, some big old nicks there a little nick there and got that all done up so now all I have to do is touch up the paint and this side will be done uh, paint the front and the inside there uh, right along in here I looked up, I looked, and it is black on a lot of machines, so I'm going to keep that black. So that's where we're at on the, on the back box. We're just about ready. We're getting close. You can see that tightened up really nice. I, I just threw some Bondo in that. That big gertie gash that was underneath, just to, I know, you, nobody ever sees it, but 
it's filled in. Plus I had extra when I was filling, so I just kept on packing it in there. And so now it's all filled in anyway too. So that's where we're at on the back box. We'll continue to work on this. We're going to get started on touching up the paint on this. Okay, got it all repaired and I got one coat of my yellow on there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting some of this black in while that dries. I can work up in here and work on some black or my red. Yeah, as long as I kind of stay away from not sticking my hand and my arm in that. I did a little touch up here. Started on the face too. Got that painted. All but that bottom. I gotta stand it up so I can do the bottom, do that side rail. Then we'll paint the inside black. And we should be pretty close to being done with this. Oh, I see I still gotta put another coat of yellow up in here. It's gonna be a little mismatched. Uh, you can see, you know, if you look at it from over here, it's really kind of hard, but you get up to it and you can see see the difference now down in here I may go ahead and and outline you know and paint everything yellow from like uh, this point I don't want to stick my finger in the paint from this point down and kinda start in here and finish that off down in the rest of this I can leave alone uh, I may come up up into here because I have some touch up up there so I may go ahead and just kind of do all that yellow there too just kind of break it off so it's not blotchy like it is here because I'll tell you what that matching that color is just one hell of a pain in the you know what in the dupa pain in the dupa so let me let me do some black. Get some black colored in here and then then I'll come and show you how the black's going in.
Okay, as you can see I got the first coat on it as far as uh, putting in the artwork. Uh, I have a, on the second coat I have a couple places I need to tidy up a little bit like right there. And I can get, I'll get those all tidied up. Uh, once this dries I'll, I'll work on some more red. Uh, I think I, I just have to finish in a couple spots of red here and right through here that one's pretty good uh, just where it's coming through a little bit but I'll, I'll coat it again and like I said that way I can I can tidy up a few of these spots I still have a little bit of yellow to do I get the rest of this yellow put in like right in there and this side will be done we'll be ready to to clear coat it to protect what's left of the artwork on it. I, I really didn't want to do too much up in here because as you can see it gets too blotchy so we may just kind of leave it the way it is and clear coat over it. Uh, the clear coat I do use is water based so it can all be all be cleaned up if uh, somebody else wants to redo it. But uh, I did the other side. Uh, I thought I'd take you along for the ride on this side to see what I have to go through to to get this artwork and everything put in. This side wasn't as bad. Uh, the other side, uh, you remember, there was nothing. It was gone. So we had to stencil in everything and put it all back in. This side, you could still see where where the artwork was and I could get it uh, painted right back in without a problem. So let me get another coat on this. I'll get this finished up and then we'll clear coat it. And I started painting the, the front here. The trim are all around the edge. Uh, all I have left is along the bottom. And we get that done. And we'll be able to let it dry and put the head unit on it and start getting everything all put back together. Get a little worked up when you're starting when you're doing this. Especially if you go out of the lines and it, then it really kind of works you up and gets you PO'd. That's why my fingers were all black at the end. <laughs> Wiping it off where I screwed up. Like I told you before, I'm no Michelangelo, but I can make it look decent. So, let's get another coat on this and we'll get the yellow all finished up and clear coat and we'll be ready. I'll get the next coat on it and all the yellow finished in and then I'll, I'll bring you back and show you where I'm at and I may even put you in a tripod and let you watch me clear coat it if you you know I'll have it in the video maybe and if you want to watch it go ahead and you know don't worry about what what brushes you should use you use the brushes that are most comfortable and give you the best results you know, there's always going to be somebody out there telling you, Oh, you can get better results if you use a, use a brush made from the crotch hairs of a chinchilla that, that is only two years old and you, only ha you can only get them in the spring because that's when they're the best. Don't worry about them people. You use the brushes that are most comfortable to you and what what gives you the best results. This little blue one here I'm using is from Sam's Club. My brown ones that you see now and then that I use, my little fine tip brown ones, those are from Hobby Lobby. And they're not the, the ten dollar a brush ones either. Sorry about that, I gotta concentrate a little bit. Okay, so it doesn't matter what brushes you use. All I can tell you is a nice, nice long bristle soft one are really nice for me. You may like a shorter bristle brush. I just like the long ones because I can get a lot of the brush marks out. 
and this is one of my favorite brushes this one really feels comfortable to me I have I don't know about 30 brushes because uh, this one was in a pack and I just so happens this was one of the ones I wanted and it was at Sam's Club and it came in a pack of I don't know 15 or 20 brushes and you're always going to get somebody telling you that well you know I can do better than that well then why aren't you doing it always kills me when people tell you that well you know I can do a better job than that well why aren't you doing it well because I I, I don't really want to do it yeah in other words you're just one of those people that would rather criticize everything everybody else does always gonna have critics but when you're done if you like it that's all that counts and if you did the best you could while doing it that's all you can ask for just keep practicing 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 you can see I'm not great at this I can I can get get it done enough to where it looks good with beer goggles on hey, that sounds like my first wife huh. that's a scary thought now just do the best you can And if you're happy with it, then everybody else should be happy with it. I like doing it. I feel a great accomplishment when I'm done. Especially when it turns out really good. Or you can be like me and stick your sleeve in the paint. And then you have to do it again. But all I can say is just do the best you can. If it's, if it's a pinball machine you're keeping for yourself, that you're just going to enjoy, or if you just want something, you want to do one, do it. Don't be scared of these things. takes a lot of time and patience if you don't have any patience then find something else to do you're gonna need the patience for these yeah. Missed that line the last time. That's why it's nice to put a second coat on. You can go over it and really fine tune it. Got my got the yellow done in. I think I'm about as far as I'm gonna go with the yellow.
I don't think we need to go any further. There's my little brown one. Like I said, that has a little fine tip on it. Uh, I have some other ones too with fine tips. This one I use mainly for doing the artwork like this. And then I have even a, a smaller smaller tipped one that I'll use for the circles on the playing field. Or you can use those acrylic pens. I've tried them and I'm not a big fan of them. I would rather use my brush. It seems I can I can paint a straight line better than I can draw a straight line. Or well, I should say I can paint a straighter line than I can draw. So I feel more comfortable with my brush than I do an acrylic pen. But, you know, try it. You may like the acrylic pen more. We just use acrylics because it can be undone very easily. Now if you use oils, you know, that's really, that's really hard to undo oil. So acrylics, you do acrylic, and then clear coat over it to protect the acrylic because even when the acrylics dry if you take a a wet rag or a sponge you can wipe wipe the paint right off you know it'll soften right up whiten or whiten it'll soften right up and come right off kind of liquefies again Now that's what's nice if you screw up and you think oh man that wrong color or looks like crap just take a sponge <laughs> and wipe it off I do that a lot when I'm doing colors if I'm not trying to mix up a color you know get a color and look oh man that looks pretty good and I'll put it on and you know that looks like hell that's too light too dark so I just wipe it off and try again No set rules. Just do what you gotta do. Do what you feel comfortable with. Okay, I've kind of blabbed on and run my mouth long enough. I'll I'll get my second coat put on this. Because uh, it's cold, so it needs a second coat. And then I'll come back and show you after I'm all done. Okay, folks, at, at some point in time you have to say enough is enough and that's enough so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll clear coat this uh, there's it shouldn't look too it shouldn't look blotchy after I clear coat it this should shine up nice and kind of blend blend in quite a bit uh, the only places that you're gonna really see it is up in here and that big nick okay folks that's it
I'm done. I got a couple of coats of clear, clear coat on it. Uh, polished it out. So now what I did put down will all be protected. It didn't turn out too bad. You know, I could spend another week on it and get it dang near perfect. You know, if I really wanted to, I could have just, I could stencil everything out and then just spray paint over the stencils and everything, you know, and match everything, make everything the same. But that's, uh, it's been long enough. Now we got this side done. Now, if I can turn this over with one hand without making more work for myself. Oh, hang on guys, uh, you're going for a ride. There we go. And that's the other side. Remember this is the side that we had to, that everything was all peeling up here on the end. Same thing. Painted it all in, clear coated it, polished it out, waxed it. Now what I did put down will be protected. But overall I think the back box really come out nice. I went ahead and I painted, painted the front, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of wax. Painted the front, inside, painted that all black. Uh, painted that little strip across there black. So the back box is officially ready to go on and we are done with it. I mean done done. Stick a fork in it. So if you like the series, or like this two parts, I'm hoping I can get this uh, second part in in one more video. It takes forever uh, for me to upload stuff. I'll tell you what folks, this has really been a long two-parter here. I've been working on this back box and cabinet for probably two weeks, three weeks. Because, you know, I could only work on it a couple hours in the evening and then on the weekend, so. But we got it done. So if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And leave us a comment. Tell me, down below, right down there. Tell me what you think. Does it look good? It's got to look better than what it did. So until next time, see ya.